Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. You've already seen that I've been revisiting some of my older tutorials and just giving them a little update using some Christmas kits by Knitwit Collection. Now you've seen this one using the Nutcracker before. So I thought I'd still use Nutcracker and just show you a very different card. Now this is my acetate panel card. I'll have a link in the description below to my original one. But I thought I'd give it a little twist with a nutcracker and show you how, from using the same paper, just the different colourway, so if I show you, you see I've literally used the same backing paper, so the reds and the green versions, and I've used the two different nutcracker images to make these. So have a look at the Knitwit Collections digital shop. There's a link below. If you haven't tried Digis before, it's a great time because at the moment is the Black Friday to Cyber Monday sale. So all the kits are on sale, not just the Christmas ones. So if you haven't tried them before and you'd like to have a go, now is the perfect time. Or if you have used them, you're already in love with them like me, you can go and fill your basket and grab yourself some new kits to play with. So if you're ready, we'll have a look at the revisit of the acetate panel card. So to start our acetate panel card, I'm gonna cut my cardstock. Now there's not much complications here. It's going to be a five by seven card. So I'm going to trim it. The short edge of my cardstock is in the top and I've scored, uh, cut it at five inches tall. I'm going to turn it around and cut it at nine inches tall. And then from this bit left over, so it's five inches by two inches. We might use this now to strengthen our top later on. Now, I haven't used my same cutter. I've got a blade, which is a bit um, blunter, which I use for my chipboard things. And I've cut my acetate as well with that. If I cut my acetate with this blade, it's going to make it blunt and no good for my cardstock. So this piece of acetate is five inches by just slightly smaller than seven. Just take off a hair's breadth, and you'll see why later on. So let's grab the scoreboard and grab my piece of card, which was cut at nine by five, and I'm gonna score it at seven inches. That'll make my five by seven card. And that is the only scoring we're going to do. So I don't lose my acetate. That is probably the trickiest thing about this card is finding your acetate. So I've folded that back and I'm just going to burnish it nicely. So the acetate I've got, you want a nice strong one. And the reason I've cut it shorter than five by seven is if I cut it the same size, it would nudge in there and create a bulge or stick out further on the bottom. So by making it a bit shorter, it just makes it a bit easier to handle. And I'm talking just a little sixteenth of an inch smaller. So I'm going to start assembling it now. So this would be the front of your card. So we're going to add the tape to the back. And you'll notice I'm not going all the way to the corners. The reason being is if I did it right to the edge and to the corners, you would see it sticking out from the acetate. If you don't mind that, that's fine. This is going to be my topper, so I want to make sure my tape is underneath that because my topper is a quarter of an inch smaller length and height. So let's take off the tape back in. Expose the adhesive. And the way I do it then is 
I hold them up and I'm lining it up at the bottom of the card. Then I'm just going to fold over and stick it down. Then I'm going to burnish it down onto my acetate. Then that other piece we did, again, don't go too near the edges. Just a couple of pieces, top and bottom. And because this is actually the base for standing on, I'm just going to put one across the middle just for extra strength. So let's take off one, two, three. And turn it around and I'm going to place this then corner to corner. It's stuck with me there. Corner to corner and down. And that is how you make your acetate panel card base. So you could have it a uh, landscape. Nothing wrong with that as well. But it just adds a bit of interest being portrait. So it still does splay a little bit, so which is why we're going to add some extra strength. But make sure as well you've burnished that down. Okay. The inside is where I'm going to put my little insert. So for this, I've got my journal card placed onto some of the green backing paper and one of the corner elements from the kit. This was made just quarter of an inch smaller. So it's four and three quarters wide. Let me just get some my pin. I did check it before the video and it was working. Here we go. So it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So just a quarter of an inch shorter than the height and width of my card. Now bear in mind when you choose what you're putting on the back, remember you will see part of it there. Now all my other pieces are the same size. They are a quarter of an inch less, so they're four and three quarters by one and three quarters because each of these were two inches tall. Now, what I have done is on the computer, I've put a plain green from the solids and then my patterned paper on top. If you haven't got the digital skills, you just print off two of your papers, one pattern, one plain, and you just cut the, your plain one, the size that I'm telling you, and then the pattern paper, just a quarter of an inch shorter again. So that is four and a half by one and a half on top. So even if your matting and layering skills on the computer aren't brilliant, you can still use your digikits. They're still brilliant and affordable because you can print off as many as you want. You won't run out of your favourite paper. So this one is exactly the same again. So the original one I made I used a paper kit rather than a digi kit. I will link to my original tutorial in the description below, as well as the shop, so that you can get your hands on the Nutcracker kit. You may think, Nutcracker, don't worry, he's still, uh, still to come, he's here. Now on the inside, I'm not gonna use my tape because this is the acetate. This time, uh, I'm not gonna use my glue, sorry, I'm gonna use my tape. And I'm going to tape it up to the edge this time because this is what's going to hide that exposed tape. So let's just burnish it down there. And if you have got a dimensional paper, make sure it's the right way up. So when you open it, my candy canes are there, so I want them upright. I'm just going to press it down. And I'm just top and tailing it, just top and bottom. And 
and make sure my candy canes are the right way up. So now that has hidden all that tape from earlier and it's also given it a bit of extra strength. Not showing yet because I've still got a bit to go. So as you've already spotted from the Nutcracker, I've chosen the Nutcracker because this image is nice and tall. Now, I've revisited one of my cards already in this series. So we've got the red version, green version, both using the same kit. So you can go either colorway and you've got both different nutcrackers as well. So it was nice to see how that was done. Now the size of this is up to you. It depends how much of the acetate you want showing, but you do want it to be larger than the gap. So you want it to be taller than three inches just to bridge that acetate piece. So I've gone for five and a quarter by two and three quarters, which means I need a three inch wide um, piece of card to back my topper onto. How much I say was? Five and a quarter, was it? Yeah, five and a quarter. So I'm gonna go five and a half. I'm just going to glue this onto my mat and layer. So. And if you want to decoupage, this is the perfect time to do it because you can put it onto the front of your topper. If I could find my foam tape, here we go. So here's a little piece, still a little bit big. Let's Cut it down. And a little bit more. And a piece for behind the hat. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with keeping this just a flat level, if that's what you so wish. And what we're going to do now is have a look on the back where we're going to attach it. So you don't want it to cover your acetate. So if I bring it down to about there, and there, that should bridge my acetate nicely. I'm going to add some glue so I can move it around should I need to adjust it a bit. So I can go right in the centre, but I think I'm going to go this side. So I can see some of those and that now will strengthen and you can see it was bowing earlier. Now it's not. I have got that black bit. Oh, I've got a bit of tape showing there. So what I'm going to do, because I had a digi kit, I was able to print a second version of that nutcracker. So it's exactly the same. I just did copy and paste, so it's on the same printed sheet. So just expose it all. And oh, let's turn it around. So when I open my card up, this is now the opposite way around to that first one. I'm just gonna place him. So there's no extra work, but you just finished off the card. And again, it did strengthen that bridge. So let's just crease it a bit more. And there we go, standing up acetate panel. So that's my second Nutcracker card to show you. Just for you to see the difference. Same kit, 
two de very different cards. So thank you for watching my revisit of the acetate panel card. I link the original video in the description below, as well as a link to my Facebook group, Paper Crafting with Paul. So if you do have a go at your own version, no matter what theme, doesn't have to be a Christmas one. I'd love to see what you make. So please share some photos in the group. I love to see them. And if you haven't already done so, please write a little comment and hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. It really does mean a lot to try and help beat that algorithm that YouTube seems to have. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.